Yo, what's up YouTube? Crash Wilcox, Crash Wilcox Computers. Um, coming back, this is gonna be part two of our $600 gaming PC build. If you guys watched part one, and if you didn't watch part one, shame on you, go watch part one. Like part one, subscribe because of part one. But this is part two. So in part two, I'm gonna, I finally got all the, uh, all the parts here. So we're gonna go through the parts that we actually did get. We're gonna do the unboxing and then the full build guide. So if you notice sitting up here next to me, this is not the case that I ordered that I showed you guys in part one. In part one, we purchased the Rosewill Cullinan MX, which was a pretty nice budget case, had a lot of RGB. We're building this PC, like I mentioned in that video, for a 12-year-old Fortnite fan. So wanted a lot of the RGB. That case, however, um, in Newegg's nice, soft, delicate hands was destroyed in shipping. So I will not be getting that case. So I had this older case um, still around. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to be building the PC in this case uh, for the guy. Not quite as much RGB. Um, it does have blue LEDs in it, so um, Hopefully that'll do. Got enough RGB maybe on the inside to satiate his lust for RGB. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Satiate his desire for RGB. So um, this is a DIY PC case. Um, just real quick, great PCs if you're on budget. Um, I've had, I've made a couple of builds inside DIY PC cases. I mean, they're, they're very inexpensive, um, but once we get into the actual building, I see they're spacious. And you know, if you're on a tight budget, I think this case was 45 bucks for a mid tower case. It's got an acrylic um, side panel, just acrylic, but you can see inside of there, which is nice, solid, uh, you know, metal back panel. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and kind of walk through the rest of the build, just so you guys can see what we got and then uh, we'll go ahead and get into that build. All right, so getting into these, uh, the component breakdown here. So as you guys saw in part one for the CPU, uh, backbone of any PC build, we decided to go with the Ryzen 5 2600. So as I mentioned in that video, $600 budget is pretty restrictive and you can still get good parts for that. And that's, like I said, what we're gonna go through here. Um, but you do kind of have to start making, you know, good business decisions. So um, the reason we chose this one, six core, 12 thread CPU, um, it has a base speed, I believe 3.4 uh, gigahertz with a boost speed of up to 3.9 um, gigahertz. But for, like I said, a 12 year old um, boy playing Fortnite, esports, free to play games, um, six core, 12 threads should last him a couple of years, get some decent gameplay out of that. Um, you know, still give him some room for the next couple of years to grow maybe into some of these AAA titles and stuff like that. But $120 we got this CPU for. Um, so just a really good value for the money there. Then we are gonna pair that with the, uh, the motherboard. We got the Gigabyte. B450 Aorus N. Uh, this is a micro ATX board, but just all around, again, good value for the money. I believe we got this board for $85 and doesn't have Wi Fi. I would have liked to get in Wi Fi, but you know, just trying to stay within that budget. So um, it's good. It's got an M.2 slot, it does come with an M.2. Um, thermal guard on it, which is pretty nice. Not every board comes with that. It does have a little bit of RGB, like I said, so that'll be nice for him. Um, but Gigabyte makes good products. A B450 is a perfect motherboard to pair with that Ryzen 5 2600. So that's what we want with there. I don't know if I can even get this set up so you guys can see it. Um, and then, uh, oh, also with the, the Ryzen 5, I believe that comes with the Wraith Stealth cooler. Um, we are exchanging that for, I have a Wraith Prism here, so I'm gonna go ahead and exchange that out for him. So he's gonna be using the Wraith Prism cooler, just a lot of nice RGB on here, a little beefier of a cooler. 
Um, not necessary as far as cooling is concerned, but it is necessary as far as looking cool is concerned. So um, that's why we went with that there. Then for the power supply, EVGA 500 BQ, 500 watt, semi-modular, um, 80 plus bronze power supply. Just pretty cut and dry here. More than enough power for what he needs. Semi-modular, so in theory, if he wanted to, he could go and get you know, some cables, um, make it look a little bit prettier inside of there. Um, but anyways, EVJ, just a good solid product. Not gonna have any issues with this power supply. And then for storage, we went with one 500 um, gigabyte SSD, Samsung 860 Evo. Just good, obviously Samsung makes fantastic hard drives, probably the best out there. And this was a good value for the money. I believe I got it for about uh, $55, $60, something like that. And that's gonna give him just, you know, plenty of speed when booting it up, getting games started. You'll be able to get all his, you know, programs and, you know, a few of his more, uh, more played, you know, game titles will be on here. Obviously you'll have to upgrade this later if you wanna, you know, start downloading a bunch of games or especially AAA titles and stuff like that. But this should be enough to get him off the ground, get him up and running. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So A60 Evo for the, RGB, uh, I mentioned in part one, uh, the part one video, I've never used, um, I think it's Geo. Um, I've never used Geo RAM before, so kind of giving it a try for the first time. Um, should be awesome because it says it's hardcore gaming memory, so why would they lie to us? Um, but it has some nice looking RGB on there, and hopefully uh, the performance is pretty good. This is 16 gigs of um, DDR4-3000. So should be pretty, pretty responsive RAM, pretty quick. And again, that RGB should be a nice touch. And then lastly, for the graphics card, this is the one I'm a little iffy on. Um, went with the used Power Color Red Dragon RX 580. Now we talked about obviously the budget being a restriction, but one of the things that helped out is he plays on 1080p. Uh, so free to play esports games on a 1080p monitor. If this card isn't a piece of crap because we bought it used, if this is actually a good card, like the dude on eBay assured me it was, um, then this should be plenty of performance for him uh, playing those. Like I said, free to play esports titles, and also, I mean, I've had an RX 5, I had an RX 590. Um, no, that's true. I had an RX 580, and it worked really well. I mean, I played AAA titles on an RX 580. He should be getting well over 60 frames per second. Now obviously two, three years down the road that may not always be the case, but for today, this is a pretty good card for the money. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start getting this PC put together, starting with these unboxings, and um, yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so first and foremost, like with any build, we're gonna get this motherboard opened up. Now, truthfully, this is not the original unboxing. I did get this unboxed. If you guys watched my um, PC Building 101 on motherboards, this is the motherboard that I used. Although I didn't fully open it, I just took it out of the package, so I've not really dug into what else is in here. So, side of here, just a SATA cable. An I.O. shield, it is padded, so that's a decent little touch for a board. And then a um, nice little decal, I'll probably put that on, I'm assuming he'll probably like that little decal. And then just your normal screws and um, your user's manual there. So, not too fancy, but you know, you get what you pay for, $85 motherboard, what else can you expect? So there's that. Check out the back side. And then get this thing opened up here. So 
Well, there it is, yep. Like I said, M.2 thermal guard on there. Um, what else got, you know, your USB 2.0, 3.0, your 3.1. Um, it's got four SATA connectors down here, power connectors. Um, otherwise, just a pretty um, basic motherboard. Um, but like I said, that is a nice touch. We won't be using it, but we have room to use that in the future, which is pretty nice. So there's that. And then what comes next, what should always come next is getting your CPU installed. So we are just gonna slide this out of the way here for a minute and get our Ryzen 5 2600. So there she is, just a little instructional manual. Like I said, we will not be using the cooler that's um, provided. We will be using our um, Wraith Prism. But there she is. So we're gonna go ahead and put this stuff back. Actually, let me get this out. Get that motherboard back in here. So then, as with any um, AM4 motherboard, which this is, you're just gonna raise that lever. And sorry, this is gonna be a painfully long, um, not gonna be really skipping through anything here because I'm also gonna be letting, um, or hoping that uh, the young man I'm building this for can kind of use this as a guide um, in the event he wants to you know, learn how to build computers on his own or you know upgrade this thing later on so this is gonna be a pretty long video but all right so AM4 motherboard you can lift up your lever arm here then you're gonna find your um, triangle on the motherboard typically if you're looking at it this way it's always gonna be in your like upper right hand corner that's where it is and then you are just going to find the golden uh, triangle on your CPU and you're gonna line those up so there you go, and then you don't need to push this down, just kind of rest it on there and let it wiggle and it'll drop in. Then you're just gonna lower your lever arm, close it back in, and there it is, it's secured. So there's that. And then, let's go. Next, we can go with uh, the, what, the cooler, I think, maybe? So, um, the cooler, does come with thermal paste applied. I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna be using what I always use, Noctua NTH1 thermal paste, the old go-to. So that's what we're gonna use because it works. Got the thermal paste. This does come with a pretty nice supply of thermal paste on it when you get it. And in the spirit of a $600 build, I wouldn't advise going out and buying, you know, extra thermal paste. But since I have it on hand, I went ahead and used it, but it is overkill. The thermal paste that they applied on here, like comes pre-applied is perfectly fine. I've used a Wraith Prism cooler with it and it worked fine, but since I have it, I'm using it. So there you have it. And then as with any thermal paste application or actually this thermal paste removal, uh, all you're gonna do is just grab some cotton balls and some rubbing alcohol and just wipe it off. It comes off pretty uh, easily. Just make sure you rub it, you know, most of it off, um, get it pretty clean. You don't want to really apply thermal paste on top of thermal paste. So just make sure you clean it pretty good. So get the thermal paste, just do the, uh, the standard pea size dot in the middle there. You don't need much more than that. 
And then let's get this thing applied. Now from what I remember, this thing's kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain. So all you're gonna be doing is taking these two little clasps on either side and on either side of these, uh, I guess, braces for it, they have little hooks. So you're just gonna be hooking those in and then sort of pushing it over and locking it down. We observe today, not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom. All right, for the love of God. And then you're just gonna be rotating it on there nice and tight. Boom, she's locked in. And we're gonna mess with all the cables here in a little bit. So there's that. Next thing, we are gonna go ahead and throw our RAM in. Yep, so now we got our uh, Geo Super Loose RGB 16 gigs. Let's get it open. pretty nice it's pretty tall so if this is something you were thinking about using um, it is quite tall so keep that in mind um, if you're building maybe something a little more low profile um, you'll want to pitch you guys probably can't see it but it does tell you like uh, slot one two four and three so according to their picture it goes slot one, two, three, and four. So basically, if you're putting in dual channel like we have two sticks, you're gonna be putting in the first and four, or the second and fourth slots. And then you're just gonna be lining it up, making sure that it looks like it fits. I'm probably, yep, yeah, that is definitely backwards. All right. And just push it until you hear a click. Boom. One's down. And this is pretty nice. I don't know if it really matters, but you know, when you're building a Ryzen PC for the first time, when it tells you Ryzen, that's just a nice little touch. Not that it necessarily matters, but it will give you that warm fuzzy that you actually bought stuff that isn't gonna, you know, ruin your computer. Here we go, 16 gigs of RAM installed. Now with this Wraith Prism Cooler, it does come with two, so you have the cable for the fan, but then it also comes with either a, um, like a USB cable, if you're gonna run it to a USB port, but we also have this um, LED CPU port that we're gonna run with this cable, so you don't have to hook up both, you just pick one or the other. So we're gonna use this one, and go ahead and get this hooked up now. And where is it at? I believe it's right here. So on this, you will see if you can see it at all. It has just two little plugs. I already removed the one that we're going to be using, um, but you can pull this out and hook your cable in there. And then also right here on here, it has a low speed and a high speed. Um, so if the fan's getting too loud, um, you can switch it. I'm going to leave it in high and it's probably going to be too loud, but that's for him to decide. There we go. It's in high. There you go. Try to get this cable management done up as well as I can. The world is very different now. For man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty. All right, so there we have that. So what are we gonna get into next? I think we will 
get this put into the case and then we will work on that power supply and start getting the rest of the cables installed. All right, so as you can see, got the case here. And like I said, there's plenty of space inside of this case for you know, $40, $50 case. It did come with all the standoffs already included. So that's a nice touch. And then also um, a nice point of reference, if you are building for the first time, um, a lot of mother or a lot of PC cases come stamped. You guys probably can't see it, but it says A ATX, M micro ATX, and I um, mini ITX. So that's just telling you that if you're using a uh, full size ATX board, you're gonna wanna put your screws everywhere that it has uh, A. We're using a micro ATX, so we're gonna look for everywhere where there's an M. And then I, you're gonna be looking for everywhere where there's an I. So it's just a nice touch if you're unsure of um, what you're doing. So now we can go ahead and get our IO shield out. And all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary belief. All right, now you can put this thing in. For which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man. And when you're screwing this motherboard in, or really any component that you're screwing in on a computer, you don't have to go, you know, overboard and tightening. You just want to tighten it down until it's not really wrist tight. You can't really tighten it with just, you know, a turn of the wrist anymore. Come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today. All right, so that's screwed in. So what should we look into next? We can get the power supply routed. Got all of our cables. And then like I said, this is semi-modular, so that 24-pin power connector does come um, pre-installed. You can't remove it, uh, but everything else you can. But just a nice looking power supply. Nothing fancy, but it's gonna get the job done. It's gonna run Cool and quiet, EVGA makes good products. There's nothing to worry about there. So it's a good idea to go ahead and get the rest of your cables um, installed before you put this in. That we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place. And then you want to mount your fan down so it's going to be drawn air in, blowing it out the back. Unlike what The Verge might have told you. I don't know that it ever gets old. If you haven't watched The Verge's video, I don't think you can find it anymore. But you can find the reactions to it. And in the reactions, you get to see the whole video, which is gold to friend and foe alike, that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. Boom. All right, so then, whoo, 
this could be a mess. I think what I had to do on the other computer the other time was put this in before the motherboard because it's a little bit tight. Let's see. Oh, that's disheartening. Born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit. All right, so we got the power cable routed up here. We'll tie this off here in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and get our SSD installed. Now there's a lot of areas that you could install this. Obviously, um, we're gonna probably just put it on Ooh, a, probably back here, but you could mount it on the front side if you wanted to. Um, it's a nice looking SSD. The slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today. All right, so there we go. Got the SSD installed. That's going to be his hard drive right there. Our 24 pin power connector. We can just feed that baby through. It's going to go right there. At home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship. Oh, and all these cables here that come pre-connected, these are all basically your front panel I.O. And then you're going to have some fan connectors down here as well. So, we're going to hook these up now. Support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival right, and so the right success here we got of USB liberty. USB 3.0, which is, uh, like I said, front panel I.O. for your USB 3.0 ports up there. Now, you can obviously get a lot fancier with your cable management, but keep in mind, this is going to be completely covered with a solid metal panel. All right, so lastly, we're gonna get into the graphics card. The used Power Color Red Dragon RX 580. Came in the box, it's a nice touch. It's got the anti-static paper on it. Let's see what's in here. So we got our disc and we got a little quick installation guide. So that's nice, I appreciate it. You know, getting stuff on eBay, you never really too sure, but at least it looks the part. So there you have it. Looks to be in okay condition. Looks like it has one 8 pin power connector there. Got a little bit of dust inside, but not too much. So let's get this thing installed and see if she works. This much we pledge and more. To those old allies whose cultural and spiritual origins we share, we pledge the loyalty of faithful friends. United, there is little we cannot do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and see if this thing works. So there it is. All the fans are working. 
And I'm gonna blow some of that dust out here when we're done, but not the point. Graphics card looks to be up and running. So next, we are gonna go ahead and get this thing hooked up, get windows installed, and get some benchmarks done. Let you guys see what it looks like. All right, let's get to them benchmarks. In a host of cooperative ventures, divided there is little we can do. For we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split asunder. To those people in the huts and villages of half the globe struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves. For whatever period is required, not because the communists may be doing it, not because we seek their votes, but because it is right. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. Finally, to those nations who would make themselves our adversary, we offer not a pledge, but a request that both sides begin anew the quest for peace. Before the dark powers of destruction unleashed by science, engulf all humanity in planned or accidental self-destruction. We dare not tempt them with weakness, for only when our arms are sufficient beyond doubt can we be certain beyond doubt that they will never be employed. But neither can two great and powerful groups of nations take comfort from our present course both sides overburdened by the cost of modern weapons, both rightly alarmed by the steady spread of the deadly atom, yet both racing to alter that uncertain balance of terror that stays the hand of mankind's final war. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness, and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the desert, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burden and let the oppressed go free. But knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth 